Hey there, my name is Heather Feather. I am the owner of Rare Bird Medicine, and today's topic is sweet silence. I I recently went to um, share space and time with a beloved friend of mine for a plant medicine retreat uh, to join her in her journey work. She's such a lovely soul. I freaking adore her. And I've been blessed to sit in several circles with her. Um, and, the, and the medicine man that I'm training with is, was there delivering the medicines as well. So I had the opportunity to also learn and I love to learn, um, especially about what interests me. <laughs> and so I was having this awesome weekend where not only am I learning about plant medicine, spending time with dear friends that I absolutely adore and pray for often when I think of them. Um, but I was witnessing the shaman that I was working with and I witnessed this always in him. <laughs> it's just such a marvel to me because I, I'm his student, you know, and like I want to learn from him. But he's like real quiet, real, real quiet. And so every time he talks, I'm like, what? <laughs> like really, really try to pay super attention. And that's hard for me as a um, person that's out of body a lot. And as, as a neurodivergent, we tend to be a lot in our inner world. And so I have to remember to like get in my body and like get in my ears and like listen to people. I usually have to push myself to listen and push myself to speak because I'm usually in such an internal world. But he was just being his usual self and being really quiet. And there was something about that process with these particular plant medicines that was, they were reminding me the experience of how he was being and the experience of having taken these medicines. They were kind of reminding me that I have permission to be in sweet silence. We don't have to fill everything with noise. Like even I went to go on a hike. I love to listen. I have a lot of amazing music. I have known some unbelievable DJs, one of them that just has the finest music in the world. And I have amazing music on my phone. And um, so I love to listen to music. And if I go on a hike, I love to have my music on or if I'm driving. But even I was just like, oh, I don't have to have music on for this hike. Like... <laughs> Like, let me just take in nature, which is also a sacred friend that I love to listen to. And let me be in silence and let me just take in what the earth is doing, what the birds are doing, and what the wind is doing. And it was a really pleasant hike because it was really, really present for it. Um, I think there are a lot of people in the world that could do with the practice of sweet silence a lot, lot more because they're very extroverted. They love attention and they're very communicative and they've developed that very well over many lifetimes. And that's amazing. And I have a lot to learn from those people for sure, because oh, I way prefer to be quiet every time. Um, but I think those people could also learn the value of being quiet. One of the things that the shaman had said is that everybody could talk a lot less. <laughs> and, he's, and he's not wrong. Like, hey, guys, we could all talk a lot less. I gotta say, I'm a very wordy broad. Um, being neurodivergent, when we're talking about something I'm interested in, I have 50 bajillion new words to say. It's like, oh my God, you're talking about my favorite topic. And and this is why I'm often misread in this realm as an extrovert or as like a an excessive communicator. It's because I'm neurodivergent. So if you talk about something I'm interested in, I have endless, I have like stacks of books in my head to recite about whatever it is that I find interesting that you're talking about. If we're not, then I'm really pushing myself usually to communicate, to not cause conversations to be dead by just blankly staring at people and being like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> you know, so that I can be like, oh, and I can like engage and allow the energy to flow in more of like an infinity symbol instead of just like one pointed, you know? And so I try to participate. I try to, that's part of neurodivergence is something called masking, which is where you attempt to behave like a non-neurodivergent person. And when you've been doing that for 48 years, you get really good at it. And so I, I'm glad, I guess, on some ways that I got a late diagnosis uh, of being on the spectrum because I am, I am adept at having conversations. And I don't think I would be as good if I had had a diagnosis earlier. I probably would have just been like, I'm not good at conversing with people. And it's true. I just like had a lovely young man stop me in the parking lot and um, he was with this dope nonprofit and I wanted to support him, but he said five sentences very fast and my whole nervous system was like overwhelmed and I didn't know what was happening or what he said meant. 
And I just was like, I'm going to pray for you guys. Cause like, I don't like, it was just weird. I don't like, I just have really weird interactions with humans. It's like, I don't, I don't know what's happening. I don't know this community. This communication is difficult for me and I don't know how to express my needs in it. So instead of telling you, I'm just going to pray for you guys and I got to go. I'm not feeling great. And I wasn't, um, but as someone, and this, I don't think this just occurs for neurodivergence. I think part of this is my neurodivergence. I think part of this is my extreme hermetism, introversion, excessive introversion. Um, I really push myself to talk and I really push myself to listen when others are speaking and to not talk over them, which has been a long time coming because one of the challenges with autism is you have a tendency to interrupt and it's oh, really hard to stop doing it. Um, and so I really, really have worked throughout my life on building that ability to talk and listen and have a conversation with Heather Feather seem a little bit more normal for everybody, but it's usually not. And so it's like, so if you're really introverted, we really live in a culture and a society that praises extroversion. It's like, oh my God, she's so fun. He's so fun. They're so fun. They're so, uh, they're so rowdy, you know, like, or whatever. It's, we, we're indoctrinated into this idea that being quiet means you're like sneaky or weird or like there's something wrong with you or like, and it's okay to be quiet. Like you have permission and I am marinating on this teaching that I was receiving where it's like, Heather, you, you have absolute permission to be quiet. You don't, you don't have to always contribute to conversation. You don't have to always be a part of conversation. You don't have to always push yourself to be in a conversation. Um, sometimes I do it because the energy feels weird in the room and I want the energy to move. So, um, but it's okay to be quiet. It's okay to be quiet. It's okay to not respond. And I, I mean that too for your phone. I used to have um, extreme urgency. Like if somebody texted me, it would stress me. I like, I would feel like I was in multiple realms at once. But like if somebody texted me and I'm around a human and I would be like, oh, I got to answer my phone, but I got to deal with this cashier. Or like I kind of, I'd have like a panic, like an anxiety freak out. Cause it was like, Oh, I got to answer the text, but I have to talk to a person and I like too many things need my attention at once. And I don't know how to choose. Like, I just feel like I don't know how to choose this. So I would just kind of panic and like try to deal with the interaction in like a really stressed way. And then like deal with the text in a really stressed way. <laughs> I'm just like, Oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. Too much communication at once trying to happen. And I don't know how to handle it. And I learned from my dear friend Magnolia that she just like doesn't respond to text. She has like hundreds of texts she hasn't responded to and she'll get to them if she does. And what she's done is something that I've also done, but I, I had not done it with this piece called the phone, which is honor her sovereignty. Like I honor my sovereignty. I don't have to show up for your thing. I don't have to be a certain way with you. I am not living my life for you. I love you. I love all of humanity. If I can serve you, if I can help you, if you need me, all of my friends know, call me if you need me. I'm, I'm, unless I'm working or doing something, you know, driving that, which are things that I don't answer the phone. I don't engage in my phone during those times other than listen to dope music. <laughs> but, but if, if I am able to support, I will. Um, but I don't have to. And it's very normative in the modern age in a relationship or, you know, a friendship. It's like, Oh my God, why didn't you answer your phone? It's been 10 minutes. Oh, what did you do through your phone in the river? Like, I have done that. I have, I also have had thoughts like that. Like, what took you four hours? But I do not want to be the commander of your time. I am not the commander of your time. I don't want to be the commander of your time. You are the boss of your time. You're doing great with it. I trust that your life is being the, lived the way you as the sovereign creator of your life should have it be lived. And I'm not, it's like such a dictator move to be like, it's so narcissistic too. Like I contacted you and you should respond. <laughs> it's like, no, like, no, rude. <laughs> my, I have my own life. You know what I mean? And my life is doing all kinds of things. And for me, I've spent a lot of my life in depression and I definitely don't want to, I don't want to engage with my phone to begin with. But when I'm depressed, I most assuredly do not, you know? And so how is it friendly for a friend or how is it familial for a family member if they expect me 
to me and my family doesn't, but like, and most of my friends don't because they know I'm not, I'm not going to any out because I've given myself this permission. But how is it friendly or familial or kind in any way that you expect me to drop my life and give you my attention because you shared your attention with me? Just because you're free doesn't mean I'm free. And I'm not talking about freedom in the broader context. I just mean your attention is free to be shared. And just because my attention is free doesn't mean I want to share it. I love to like sit and just kind of stew in my thoughts and like I require a tremendous amount of alone time and that recharges me because I'm also very driven. So when I'm not being driven and doing all these many, many things that Heather Feather is constantly doing, then I, I want to be quiet and I want to like take my spirit in and I want to listen from a higher plane of understanding of myself as a woman and a being, you know, like what is it entity Heather in this creation you're really trying to do and are you on target and and I can't do that if I'm just like filling all my time, like, anyhow, <laughs> Sally, Bill, blah, 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 let me get back with you right away because you contacted me. So I'm kind of asking you, and I'm checking in with myself as well today, do you give yourself permission to respond to communication at any point? Now, it's really beneficial when you are... Um, neurodivergent or have a different brain matrix because usually responses take time. I nearly always, when I respond to something like 24 hours, I'm like, Oh, I wanted to say this. <laughs> like I didn't say what I wanted to say. Like, Oh, if I had, had time, like it's one of the things that's really stressful because communication is like this and it's expected that you're just going to like respond. And, um, I need time to respond. I need like I need to be able to be with myself and be with my thoughts and like consider what you said and like weigh that and consider in my multifaceted perspective, like what, what do I think in response to what you said? Do I have an opinion? Do I care about what you said? Is it a topic that interests me? Like there's so many things I want to check in about before I just look, like, anyhow, this, these words just came out of my mouth. And there are a lot of people that just like words are just constantly coming out of their mouth. They're just like, blah, 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 blah. I listen to a lot of conversations. I spend a lot of time in cafes and I spend a lot of time listening to other people's conversations because I find it so interesting. And I noticed this in myself too, where you're just like using all the words to tell a story and you're just giving like way too many details. I have a tendency to do that because I don't know. Sometimes it's hard for me to gauge what's relevant to the story. So it's just like, Anyhow, here's every single fact I collected on this story I'm telling. <laughs> it's like T TMI, Heather. Um, but it's okay to pause. You're allowed to pause in a conversation, whether you're on the phone, whether you're face-to-face. -face. Uh, and it's uncomfortable. I recommend practicing it just to see, like, you know, how uncomfortable it can be not only for you but for others. I practice the pregnant pause, and I know people that practice it with a lot more breathing room than I do. And it is, you're just like, <sighs> now some people practice long pregnant pauses because they like having someone's attention on them, him and hawing and wait, like, ooh, what are you gonna say next? I can't wait until you speak. And that's a little irritating. <laughs> you know, like, don't, don't do it to steal people's attention, but it's okay to pause. It's okay to be still and be like, let me, and, and you can be not rude. You know, this is one of those things I've learned on the spectrum is to be like, let me answer that in just a minute. Let me, give me a minute to think about it. You know, you don't have to just be like a dramatic pause about everything. You know? Like, why don't you stare at me while I think on this? Um, it's okay to take time by yourself. It's okay to not respond to your phone. It's okay to, I get overwhelmed. Sometimes I respond to all my stuff one month after people have caught or two months because I have a YouTube channel, I have Facebook, I have Instagram, I have text messages, I have email, I have Facebook chat, I have Instagram chat. We have so many, and I don't have TikTok, and I don't do Reddit, and I'm not on Twitter, and but we, you know, I don't do Snapchat or Ghost Phone or whatever that's called. I don't have all of the mediums under which we can communicate, but I have a bunch. And it used to be you'd sit on your stoop and wait for the mailman to bring you a letter, or somebody would have to roll up on you to have communication, you know what I mean? And now there's like all these ways that people can communicate. And still we're getting the mail and all of the things, answering the phone. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. So can you give yourself permission to pause, permission to not answer that thing right away, 
to be with you. You can always subscribe to Rare Bird Medicine on YouTube. Like and comment there. I'd love to hear your thoughts, Sabun.